Well, greetings everyone. Uh, this is a overview of my cruiserweight workflow. Just to be clear up front, what this isn't is any sort of tutorial on SDXL or Comfy UI. Rather, this is just to walk you through my personal cruiserweight, which is my daily driver workflow that's included as part of my uh, workflow collection on Civit AI. So, without further ado, what you see on the screen is when you load what you see when you first load it up and should contain everything you need just to generate images on a daily basis. There is more to it than this, which I'll show you in a minute. But just to start with this screen, which is the green area, we have over on the left ChatGPT Assist. Now, by default, that's disabled and to re-enable it you just need to unbypass this node down here but as the note says you will need an api key and an open ai account this is why it's disabled by default underneath that is the prompt selector and this is what allows you to choose between either using the linguistic positive option number one getting a random prompt from Lexica, which incidentally is a WAS node suite node and not anything of my own design. Or the third option is to use a one button prompt, which gives you a random alt image uh, prompt. And all you have to do is select which option number you want to use. Down underneath that, we have the supporting terms. So this whole model is built around the recommended SDXL workflow and underneath that global negatives. The other things that can impact your prompt, I have three style nodes here. The first one global, that applies to both the linguistic positive and the supporting terms and if required to the global negatives. The positive style applies only to anything in either the linguistic positive, the random prompt or the one button prompt and occasionally global negatives and the supporting style applies to anything in the supporting terms and on occasion global negatives. So between these three nodes you've got somewhere in the order of over a million different combinations that you can select. Down below that, we've got two LoRa loading nodes to enable you to load your LoRas if you want to use them. Coming back up to the top of this column, we've got our standard seed. The same seed is applied to each of the three different samplers that are here used. Uh, we've got the noise mode. Now, what this allows you to select between is CPU mode which is the Comfy UI default or GPU mode, which is the A11111 mode. Please note this is not a quality improvement, but it does change how the um, image is generated. Next over in the next column, we've got our CFG our total number of steps that we want to run and what percentage of those steps that you want to use in sampler one or base. Uh, so for 80% it will run around, I think it's about 17 steps of the 25 in here before using the other eight, nine steps in sampler two. If for any reason you want to only use a model, an SDXL model, without any sort of refiner steps, just set this to 100%. Coming down, we have our two model selectors. Model 1, which is the equivalent of the base, and Model 2, which is for the refiner. Model 1 is also used in my standard upscale K-sampler. Moving down below that, we've got an option to either 
use a standalone VAE or to use the baked in VAEs from the models. Uh, you can't do them independently, it's either use the baked in or use the standalone. And then that's obviously the standalone. There's a note here referring to FreeU, which is a node which again is disabled by default. The node is actually off to the engine room over to the left, which I'll show you shortly. And again, this is a key thing. There's several areas in here where I've got little notes and links to various other YouTube videos. Hence, as I said, this isn't a tutorial on SDXL or Comfy UI. This is just showing you the layout of my uh, Cruiserweight workflow. Across the top, there's effectively a status bar, so you can keep a track of what's going on. Uh, these, you shouldn't really need to touch them if you do. You can expand on them to change the various settings. And one of them over here is related to the Ultimate SDS upscale. And again, that can be expanded on if you need to change any settings in there. Just down below these in the purple section, the way I've built this is to work with two upscale models. The first upscale, pixel upscale, uh, I recommend using a one times upscaler, such as I personally use Art Clarity. And the second one, which is a 4x upscale, uh, I like the Nickelback 7000G. And the links to those are in the options over here. Face detailer, that turns face detailing either on or off, depending on the option selected. And then we've got our output options. You've got four options here. You can either just choose uh, to have no upscaling at all. So that'll just give you the image size as selected over here. You can, option two is a standard upscale, which is probably the quickest method and which, to be honest, I use pretty much all the time. And that, as I say, uses these two upscale models to get into a 4x upscale, and then it downscales it to a 2x. Uh, the third option is to use the ultimate upscaler. That's quite a bit slower. And there is a fourth option which is to use an iterative upscale. And the elements related to that are below this screen. And again, I'll show you those in a bit. Coming over to the right, this shows you your preview image of the standard uh, image as it's been generated before any face detailing or anything else. And in this area here, this is the final image. Please note, this isn't the save node. The save node is actually over in the engine room, off screen to the left. Coming back to this right hand column, these are all to do with turning on revision or IP adapter. Uh, so if you want to turn it on, you just select that to one. Off is zero. So I've turned it on there. And then if I want to use revision, I leave it at zero. If I wanted to use the IP adapter, I use one. And I'll show you the two areas for those. In fact, actually, let's pull that off so you can see them now. So by default, I've got all this disabled. This is the revision an IP adapter zone and the reason it's disabled by default is to avoid generating errors because you don't have the same images as me loaded and again there's an area down here with a whole load of explanatory notes in please ensure you read because I get very grumpy if I ask question if I get asked questions and the answers in the notes let me just set that back to zero 
and again same for the control nets there's two sequential control nets you, you've got a choice of and again they disable by default or bypass by default so you don't get errors if you want to bypass them just right click on the node and set groups nodes to always and then upload your image once you've uploaded the image you can leave these like this and then just turn on or off whether you're using them from these switches down here so if i zoom out a bit so i said down underneath the main area here this is where we've got the face detailer important thing to notice by the way depending on what options you select you will see some of these going red that's perfectly normal and to be expected uh, one of the key things you're probably going to want to change down here is which checkpoints being used and that's also the thing that's most likely to cause you an error when you run it just to the left of that is an iterative upscaling routine again i have used it your results may vary it is very very slow well it certainly is on my 1080 ti uh, if i come over i've referred to it already the engine room to be honest you shouldn't really need to touch any of this unless you're into reverse engineering in which case you're going to need to expand all these out and try and work out what's going on uh, the only ones you may want to touch but again i never actually adjust them are the positive and negative a scores which are all part of the sdxl conditioning and also the conditioning scale which affects the size of the image that's being used in the sdxl conditioners uh, one here that you may want to experiment with is free view uh, free you not free view that's a TV service here in the UK. If you want to use it, control B to turn off the bypass. And then, as I've said over here in the notes, it's very much a case of do your own experimentation and research in how to use it. There is a link to the uh, GitHub site over there. And then one of the final things in here is the poor man's uh, instant laura which is an ip adapters section now this is bypassed for a slightly different reason it's not switchable if you want to use it again right click on the group and set group nodes to always load up your images and do whatever you need to do with it uh, again I'll provide a link to um, the developers white YouTube video on this which is probably one of the best ones available no, template. Just bypass that again so that is a very quick overview of my cruiserweight workflow and if you look at it in its entirety what you've got is way of looking at it is this green zone is your daily driver zone which is where it normally loads up if you're running at 1440p you've got your control nets and your revision and original IP app adapter nodes over here on the right hand side face detailing iterative upscaling underneath and your poor man's instant Laura over on the left the other thing to notice is I've got the spaghetti turned off. I just find it a far cleaner look. If you don't know how to do that, it's from this little gear cog and you change it there. So that's spaghetti on. Spaghetti off. Cheers.